Here I've got a nice problem that comes from a math contest in Romania in 2003. And before we get started talking about the problem, I just want to recall the following notation. So if we've got some string of numbers that are all between zero and nine with a line over them, that means we're forming the number with those digits. So this is the number with digits A1, A2, up to AN minus one. And then this is the number made out of the digits a1, a2, up to an. Okay, so now that we've said that, let's look at the statement of this problem. We want to find all natural numbers n and ai from the set 0, 1, up to 9, where a1 is not equal to 0. That just means that we don't have any leading zeros on the left-hand side of our number such that the square root of the number formed from the digits a1 to an minus the square root of the number formed from the digits a1 up to an minus 1 is equal to this last digit an. So that's this number right here. Now I want to notice that this an will be between 0 and 9, so that really puts some restriction on this. Okay, let's get started. So I'll start by setting this number right here, a1 up through an, equal to some variable. So let's let x equal this number with digits a1, a2, all the way up to an minus 1. And then we'll notice that this object over here is exactly 10 times this that moves everything over to the left one plus a n. So maybe let's just make that observation. So if we take 10 times x, we're gonna get a1, a2, all the way up to a n minus one, zero, which means 10 times x plus a n is equal to a1, a2, all the way up to a n, like that. So what does our equation look like now? So our equation is now the square root of 10x plus a sub n minus the square root of x is equal to a sub n. But now that we've got this equation, we can really just use techniques from like a pre-calculus type class. Although I will say that there is a sneaky trick that you can use if you want to save some time. Maybe post in the comments that sneaky trick if you know what it is. So I'll start by squaring both sides of this equation, and that's going to give us 10x plus a n plus x minus 2 times the square root of 10x squared plus a sub n times x equals a sub n squared, like that. But now we can simultaneously combine some like terms. So this 10x and this x is a like term while we move this equation around a little bit. So we probably like to move everything with the square root over to the other side. So let's see, we'll have 11x plus a sub n minus a sub n squared from moving this over is equal to 2 times the square root of 10x squared plus a sub n x. Okay, good. Now we'll square both sides. So let's see what happens if we square both sides. We'll have 11x plus a sub n minus a sub n squared squared equals 40x squared plus 4a sub n x. Now we just have to go about squaring this guy right here which is not conceptually that difficult, but just requires some care. So that's going to give us 121x plus a sub n squared plus a sub n to the fourth. So those are all the pure squares. And then we'll have our cross terms. So we'll have plus 22x times a sub n. So that'll be like this times this minus 22 x times a sub n squared, that's like this term times this term, and then minus 2 a sub n cubed. So that'll be like this term times this term. And I just realized I made a mistake here, that should be a square. Okay, so let's maybe move this new equation to the top of the board, this one that has 40x squared plus 4 times a n x equals all of this, and then we'll finish it off. On the last board, we got to the following equation. Now we're ready to unravel this equation. 
So notice that it's quadratic in x. So that means we could probably solve it with the quadratic formula. Notice this is an x squared term on the left hand side. This is an x squared term on the right hand side. So we'll probably want to move that one from the right hand side to the left hand side. And then these are our terms with x on the left hand side. And then this is our term with x on the right hand side. And then furthermore, these are our constant terms. So let's move this green over and that orange over and then maybe like put stuff together. So 121 minus 40, that's 81. So we have 81x squared. Then let's see, our coefficients of x will be like this. We'll have 22anx, well that's going to be minus 4, so that's going to be plus 18an minus 22an squared times x. So we can just factor the x out. And then next we've got this thing in blue, but notice we can factor an an squared out of that. And we're left with a n minus one quantity squared. So I'll let you guys check that, but that's not too hard to see. Okay, so now we're down to this spot. And now we've just got a really gnarly application of the quadratic formula. So notice we'll have x is equal to negative our b term. So that'll be minus this, giving us 22 a sub n squared minus 18 a sub n. And then we'll have that's plus or minus the square root of this guy squared minus four times this guy times that guy. So that's like kind of a mouthful, but it's not actually technically that difficult. So I'll let you guys check that. What you end up with is the square root of 16a n squared times the quantity 10 a n squared minus 9. And that's all over 2 times 81 from this guy right here. Okay, well, a little bit of simplification can happen here. And we'll get x is equal to a n times... 11an minus 9 over 81. So that's what we get from this stuff outside of the square root. And then plus minus 2 times an times the square root of 10an squared minus 9 over 81. So again, that's the simplification that can occur. And now we're a little bit restricted. So let's recall that we know the following fact. We know that a n must come from the set 0, 1, 2, up to 9. Another thing that we know is that this value of x is most definitely an integer. Well, it's actually a positive integer. That's just the way that it's formed, how we defined our x. Remember, x was this guy right here. Okay, but that means that we've got a perfect square inside of this radical. So let's notice that. This is a perfect square. Now putting these two facts together, this must be a perfect square and the whole thing must be an integer. It allows you to sort through the possible values of a n, maybe just one at a time until you find one that works. And what you'll see is that a n must be equal to 9. Okay, so now that we've got that taken care of, let's maybe take this value of 9 and plug it in here. And notice we'll get x equals 4 or x equals 16. And now let's check each of those scenarios on the next board. To this point, we've determined that there are two possible solutions. So this number a sub n can only be equal to 9, but x could be 4 or 16. And now let's check each of those. So recall that x was this number right here. So this number in this first square root is x with the additional digit of a sub n at the end. So this corresponds to the square root of 49 minus the square root of 4. But notice that that is equal to 7 minus 2, which is 5, which is not equal to 9. So in other words, we are not satisfied by this solution.
Well, hopefully we'll be satisfied by this solution. So we'll have the square root of 169. So that'll be x with this extra digit minus the square root of 16. We'll notice that's 13 minus 4, which is equal to 9. So this works. But now let's go back to our statement of our problem to see exactly what's asked for. We're asked for this value of n and then these digits. So that means n is equal to 3 because we've got a three-digit number here. And then a1 is equal to 1, a2 is equal to 6, and a3 is equal to 9. Okay, and that's our final answer. And that's a good place to stop.